Hey everybody, this is uh, The Disc, we're back with This Disc is Great with Stephen 8, episode 10. Uh, tonight, just bear with us, we're Saiyan's cameraman, so we're going we're gonna to try to make this work. Um, we're going to give people a few minutes to jump on. Um, Steve, why don't you talk about your disc golfing this weekend? Uh, any exciting things happen? This past weekend was not the most eventful, but I kind of started to figure out something in my game with uh, kind of my release point. And I've started to be able to throw almost more tunnel shots. Like, I don't feel out of control as much with this throw. <clears throat> and well, the thing that started off was I was uh, practice throwing near a tree. There was no way I was going to hit it. But something changed with that throw. And now I've got a, I've got a good thing going for me. It's, it's kind of funny how I haven't been playing terribly long, but it's almost a weekly thing. Something new kind of clicks in my game, and so the, the, the veterans are like, "Oh yeah, how did you not know that?" But I'm just like, oh, "I'm sorry," but it's a it's a good time. Learning and growing is good. And Kyle, we are not early this week. We are actually on time. Uh, this is the normal time for this disc is great with Stephen Nate. Wednesdays at five. We'll try to be here every week unless we have some some technical difficulties like we've had the last couple of weeks. Um, and again, I'm going to be trying to follow your comments on here because our cameraman's gone, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. Uh, guys, we've got three different discs to give away this week. So like, comment, share, ask us questions, and somebody's going to win stuff. Uh, we'll go up with a cool way to give some of these away. Um, actually, I've been wanting to do this for a couple of weeks now, and I keep forgetting to tell Evan. Um, I'm working through a bunch of restocks. I've got like 12 boxes of discs I'm working on. Um, but I'm picking up some new stuff, some new plastics that we haven't carried. Like I just picked up a bunch of Biofusion from Dynamic Discs. Uh, historically, we hadn't carried it for I'm not sure why. But that's the plastic that you see Ricky and Paige and Eric McCabe are all throwing Biofusion stuff. Um, Steve, why do they like the Biofusion better? The Biofusion has a different grip than your regular Fusion. But then at the same time, it's going to have... A really nice it, it's almost that's not quite starlight kind of idea where it's easier to get it up to speed but it's kind of it's, it's, it's a little less stable it's not the light the lightweight it's just simply the, it, there's a little bit more flexibility in it and it allows it to be turned into speed and be a little less overstable for for those long distance shots. Yeah, I've been told that Biofusion is generally a little less stable, so it glides a little better, which is why Ricky likes throwing the Enforcers as max distance driver. Um, Paige throwing Fusion, Biofusion Sheriffs. I saw McCabe throwing Biofusion Defenders. Um, the Biofusion Defender I have is actually the beefiest Defender I own, huh. but that's just kind of a that just happens sometimes. Uh, but in general, they're less stable. They glide farther. So I picked up some of those. But if you guys have any specific discs or specific plastic types that we don't have that you think we should, that you want to buy from us, comment with that, let us know, and I'll look at trying to pick them up. Don't ask me for Sexton Firebirds, don't ask me for Coaling Thunderbirds, don't ask me for Mick Pro stuff, I can't get it. I would love to have it, but Innova won't let me. Even personally, we can't get it. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I, ha I would have to buy it from the factory store to have any at all. So we can't get those, but anything else, let me know, and we'll start trying to pick those molds up. Uh, so Steve, what discs are we talking about this week while we get some more people jumping on? Well, this week we focus on MVP, and this MVP is a little different. Uh, to start off... It's we, not even MVP, technically. Yeah, they've, they've gone and created a new line of discs where they've removed the overmold technology. That nice black rim you always see on MVP, they've taken it off. And they've made some, I think it's a good change. I think for being a little less expensive of a disc, you know, kind of staying competitive with pricing, uh, taking off that rim, we've got a whole new line of discs. Uh, this week it was the the Neutron and the Proton Trace. So before we get into the disc specifically, why, what's the benefit of taking the overmold off? What's, what's the big selling point of those? I thought it was price, but what's your end? It is. Oh. So what, what is the, the Proton is essentially Champion. What's the Proton go for as compared to Champion plastic? The Pro, these here or the? Those there. All right. I, 
I thought they were 14 or are they 13? The Proton is 11.95. 11.95 when our our champion plastic from Innova is all is 12.99, 12, 12. which is as cheap as we can legally sell it. So they're they've gone and undersold Innova. That's how competitive they're being. Which I think the normal Proton, I believe, is thirteen ninety nine is the cheapest I can sell it. So it's two dollars cheaper than their overmold discs, and the the pro the Neutron, I believe, is twelve ninety nine, which is again two dollars cheaper than the regular Neutron overmold. So they're super price competitive, but they're still great plastic. They feel great. Yeah, I like it a lot. Um, we got a question before we go too far. Josh Wagner wants to know. He's playing his first tournament. He wants a good distance driver. Um, give him two or three recommendations from a couple of different companies. Uh, I hope you're not playing it blind, like you're just going to go buy it and throw it. I highly suggest throwing my recommendations before walking into the tournament. Um, I would say distance. I like the, I like the, the Beast by Innova. You know, if you've got a big arm, it's good hyzer flip. If you don't have the biggest arm, it's still going to have uh, a nice straight flight with a finish to you. Um, heck, I'd say get one of these streamlined traces. You guys will see why in a little bit, but I really like this disc. And then uh, Latitude 64, I'd say it's a, it's a toss-up between, like, the Fashion and the Bolt. But I would probably say the bolt. For a, for a max distance driver, for a middle to, for medium to slow arm speed, the bolt for sure. Yeah. If you've got a little bit higher arm speed, grab a ballista. One of my favorite drivers. Um, and we'd, we'd be a little remiss if we didn't mention the end of a strike. Um, that's me, one of me and Steve's favorite discs right now. Um, we reviewed it a few weeks ago. Go back, check it out. It's awesome. Um, I'm working some of them into my bag right now. Um, I can't keep them on the shelf. Like, I had 20 star ones last week and they're gone. Gone. So, uh, it's selling well. People are loving it. Um, again, before we get into this week's review, Steve, why, what's the advantage to the overmold in general? Why does, do you know why MVP does the overmold? Well, from what I've heard, is it really keeps almost like the momentum, the centrifugal force being on the outside edge of that disc. So, I'd say it really prevents a lot of the wobbly flight and really allows it to spin at a center point and get a nice clean flight. Yeah, so my understanding is the overmold allows them to put more of the weight in the rim of the disc, which is what they call their gyro technology. So more of the weight is at the outside, which is allows a smaller rimmed driver to spin faster like a wider rimmed driver, essentially. So you get more spin out of a disc that you might not normally um, I haven't thrown enough MVP to know if there's really a difference or if it makes any difference at all. Um, they think it does, um, so they want, uh, you should check them out, check them out, find yeah. out. I've got a lot of guys who love MVP through all this stuff. Um, the rubber is really, really um, durable. That was my biggest concern when they first came out was, oh, this is just going to rip off or it's going to beat up really fast. It doesn't. It actually is as durable, if not more, than other molds of this. Yeah. Um, Steve, before we get into the trace review, why don't we talk about the, the pilot, which yep. is their, which is the streamlined putter. You want to give us a description of Absolutely. the Absolutely. We got the stream streamline electron. This is the saw. But the pilot has a medium depth grip with a little tiny bead wing design. It's flat top, comfortable rounded nose. Pilots feel in the hand with grippy electron plastic will inspire confidence, while its dead straight flight takes you right to the pin. MVP throwers will find the pilot's depth in between the atom and the anode, and its flight most similar to a seasoned anode. So we got a speed of two, glide of five, turn of negative one, and a fade of one. And now, so while we get to talking about that, what's special about the stamps on all of the streamlined discs? They've definitely stepped up the game. They got at least two different colors. Three. There's three of them? There's at least three colors in every streamlined stamp. Woo! So every streamlined disc has a triple stamp design on it. So this one's got black, silver, and blue. Um, this, they're super sweet. They're gorgeous. Um, they're, they're, I have some special edition traces on the way called the Ace of Trace. 
Um, there's a pretty sweet custom stamp you'll see on the website next week. Um, but anyway, Steve, what do you think about the putter? Oh, man. First off, show them how bendy that is. This like, is, yeah, they're soft you're, plastic. You're not trying too hard there, but it still feels rigid in the hand. Like, I was putting, I was doing 45 footers, and I could tell it was a little bit of that bend, but as soon as it came out of the hand, it snapped back into it, that rigid form, and then it just held whatever line I was putting on it. It, I, it was effortless using that. So Kim Barrett, to answer your question, um, we are giving away all three of the discs that we're holding right now. Somebody comments, asks a question, shares the video. Um, we're going to give one away here pretty quickly. Um, but we took this out and threw it with the trace. We didn't video any of it um, just because it's hard to do putters. Um, but throwing it, I was actually really surprised with its stability. I, I, when I throw putters hard, a lot of them flip over. Um, I don't throw a lot of putters on drives because I have trouble controlling them. That's me, not the disc. But this, throwing it on a hyzer, it pops up flat. It glided significantly farther than I thought. Like the, fir the first, first time I throw. My first throw, I threw it and I was like, oh, like, I like that. <laughs> so uh, it flies really well for a putter. Um, I've only thrown like six putts in the store here with it, but I nailed all six of them dead center. So I might actually need to get one for myself. Mm -hmm. And it might kick judges out of the bag. It just might. Um, Steve, uh, you had, so you, you like this? Yeah, dude, recently? that was, they were, very comfortable releases. I the, I usually use a, a more sturdy putter, and I kind of liked having that little give, because then it, it kind of felt cleaner. With It, it allowed it to flex, and uh, it did, it kind of worked with my putt, rather than you're like, oh, I didn't get my super hard putter in the right position, now it's gonna hold whatever. It's almost like, it works, you aim at the nose, and then the rest just kind of follows. It was weird, but I liked it. I did like it. Yeah, I, I liked it throwing, and I've liked it putting so far. It's a little bit we've done with it. Um, Chris wants to know if we personally bag any overbolts. Yeah, not MVP, but I just picked up uh, two new discs from Latitude. Yeah, Latitude 64, which you'll see these in a couple weeks, just released three overmold discs themselves. They're a little different. They're not the gyro technology that's... It's uh, it's optoplastic in the middle, gold plastic on the edge, um, which is supposed to make it more durable. Um, and I do really like the Gobi. I'm really, I, Both I'm thinking about getting one. Um, but I, for me, I care, I try to keep my bag really consistent during the year. Um, I try not to change it too much. And so it takes a lot for a disc to work itself in. I've not tried a lot of the MVP stuff. And at this point, you've got a, a disc has to really wow me to get me to, yeah. to switch it out. Yeah. So I, I personally haven't, but it's not because it's not good, it's just because I haven't personally tried it um, enough to work anything in. Um, let's see. Let's see, anything else? I don't want to give this away. Let's see. Um, let's get one more question before we go to some, <coughs> talking about some more of the review stuff. Um, Tony says, his drive isn't that great, he's throwing um, what looks like a Champ Katana um, or a Champ Dominator based on the numbers he gave me. Um, he wants to know what he can do to get his drive better. With that little information, what would you suggest? What's the first number? Um, 13. 13? If you're throwing a Speed 13 disc and it's not consistently getting at least 300 disc down. You, even a katana, if, if you're throwing it here and it's not flipping up and almost turning into a roller with carrying the distance, I, I, you need to disc down. It's too much disc and it's, you're trying too hard to get distance. Which is, this is something we've talked about a lot on the show, and we'll talk about it a little more um, in different, on different stuff. The biggest mistake I see a lot of beginning players make is they want to grab the biggest, baddest driver they can find. Um, so, just a little tip when it comes to speed. Um, speed is the width of the rim, but it also correlates to how hard you have to throw the disc to get it to fly right. So the bigger the drive, the wider rim the driver, the harder you have to throw it. 
Um, and I know I'm a guy. I don't like to admit that I can't throw hard enough to throw the biggest, baddest discs. But I can't make a PD2 do what Simon makes a PD2 no, does. Sir. No, sir. Um, so just because it's the best disc for the pros doesn't mean it's the best disc for you. Um, and you really want to start. Any beginner, I I hesitate to even point them to a Shrike, even though it's pretty easy to throw 13 speed. You want to stay around eight or nine, so you can build better form, build better snap, and then move up to those strikers. Because if you're not getting up to that 13 speed, you're not going to get the proper flight, and it's not going to go very far. Um, generally, people who are throwing 250 to 350 are getting just as much distance out of a Valkyrie that they are out of a Katana. Um, so, and at that point, you're just adding some more variants, some more things you can screw up. Basically, you want to throw the slowest disc you can to get the distance that you need on a hole yep. to have more control. Yep. So, disc down a little bit, um, and we'll, uh, we'll, that'll help you out a lot. And in fact, Tony, since you asked that question, um, we're going to disc you down a little bit right here, and you're going to go ahead and win the, let's go the, okay, the Neutron. The Neutron Trace is going to be yours. It's a little slower of a disc. You might be able to pump it out a little farther. Um, we're going to look at how it flies here in just a second. In fact, Steve, why don't you talk to us about what the trace is supposed to fly like? Yep. So the numbers on the trace are 11, 5, negative 1, and 2. So, like I said earlier, beast, that's negative 2, 2. This is uh, just a little fast. You know, it's it's still a decently wide rim. 11 yep. speed, that's, a, that's still a pretty good size wide rim. Um, the, they say the trace is moderate dome is smooth and even, and a, sh and a shoulder and depth that yields excellent glide. Most players will be able to stand up the trace on a hyzer flip, but the trace will soak up plenty of power before being pushed off its straight line, ending in a smooth but dependable fade. Uh, that's exactly what it is, man. This so, is. So, what were the numbers on that again, Steve? Just to give us, give yeah, it to us we got 11, 5, negative 1, and 2. So what disc is that, give, give me one or two discs that immediately makes, pops out in your mind like that's close to. When I hear negative one, two, I'm thinking Falchion, I'm, it's. That's latitude though, that's not negative one, two. All right, fine. <laughs> uh, Check out that trifoil stamp again. Yeah, like Beast, Beast is just. I don't know, man. It's kind of like my disc. It's one of my yeah. go-tos. It's hard to get away. And you have a stable beast, though. You have a pretty stable yeah, beast. Yeah, I do. Um, like the first thing that I think of when I see those numbers is Wraith. That's, it's one step less stable than a Wraith um, by end of his, But by the numbers, when I see those numbers, I'm thinking this is a Wraith. Sure. Um, the other thing it's close to, I mean, it, eh, it's like, that's, that's the number one thing. I don't, have, I don't know if another one that's exactly that number is. Um, so it's very similar flight number wise to a Wraith. Um, I've liked I've liked this disc a lot. Um, let's let's get to the videos and we will uh, we'll check it out. So let's let's see how this sucker flies. Let's get in here and let's get closer. Boom, that'll work. All right, let's check out some video. I think I've got the first one coming up here. And where did it, there we are. All right, so my first throw, I'm throwing a pretty power hyzer. You can see the angle that comes out of my hand there. All right, so again, that's throwing at a pretty steep angle and a pretty steep hyzer, um, full power. Doesn't turn up a whole lot. It kind of stands up a little bit, glides out, and then reliably hyzers out. So it's not flippy. Like if I did that with a, with a katana um, or something that that kind of flippy or say a, um, a bolt, it's going to flip up straight and then hyzer out at the end. So it's not got a ton of flip, it's got just a little bit to straighten out, but reliably hyzers out. Uh, the U-Disc distance, which again, if you haven't seen us before, we're pseudo sponsored by U-Disc. All of our measurements are through that app. It's got a lot of great features. Check them out. Um, it's 100% worth the $5 a year for Pro. Check them out. Get it. It helps a lot. Lots of cool stuff. Um, so 351 on a power hyzer, it's pretty much what I'm getting out of any any distance driver. Um, yeah, it's pretty pretty solid and reliable on that line. Let's see what Steve's first shot looks like. So I'm trying. That's a pretty aiming for the straight shot. So 
even coming out at this angle, it tried to work its way left. So I believe the negative one, and then it had a real nice, honestly, that was really a slow turn, a yeah. slow fade. Uh, I felt, I felt like I hardly threw that, and it, and it really carried well. Yeah, so my, my first shot was a little bit more of a spike hyzer. Steve's got a nice wide hyzer here, and it held that, stayed in the air, and hyzered out really well. Um, 365 on a big hyzer for Steve is, I mean, that's pretty solid. That's what he's hitting with just about anything on that kind of a yep. hyzer line. Um, which also, if you're getting confused by the flight lines, what's something important they should know about your throwing, Steve? Uh, the average person would say, I use the wrong hand. Yeah, Steve so. is, Steve's left-handed, so if the videos don't make sense, that's why he's throwing left-handed. <laughs> we haven't mentioned that in a couple weeks, yeah, so I, I wanted to make sure we forgot. <laughs> Oop. Clicked on the wrong screen. Let's see. All right, let's look at the next shot here. This is a little flatter shot. Yeah, see, that came out of my hand pretty close to flat. Went straight for a little bit, got some nice, some nice soft turn. Didn't dump. Uh, I actually couldn't. I tried to throw some nice big turnovers with this, and I couldn't get it to dump on me. So it's it's got enough turn to get you some distance, but not enough turn that it's going to dump out and burn on you, um, which is nice. That's good. You want that in yeah. the driver. Um, so it's got that little bit of turn, but some really solid fade back um, at about 373. Uh, that's a pretty good shot for a distance driver. Um, I don't know if our GPS was screwing up or if we just weren't throwing as far today. Um, the first film session we did where all the video is terrible and out of focus, um, Steve popped a couple of these out to like 440, 420. Um, so we didn't get quite as far on this day. We weren't using a T-pad, so I think that's part of it. Mm -hmm. um, but this disc can bomb. It can go real far. Um, but 373 is a pretty solid drive. I'm somewhere between 370 and 420 on a daily basis with my drives, depending on wind conditions, things like that. So it's pretty solid for a distance driver. All right, let's see Steve's next shot. If you guys can't tell, when it comes to discs that come over stable to my my throw, I'm generally going to be throwing that flat. Uh, when I go to my understable disc, that's when I throw on the hyzer. But these these felt pretty overstable to me, but. They were crushing. Like that's that's a sweet, just nice little flip up and nice fade. I think, I think for even an average arm, someone who's going 320 as like their tippy top, they could still do do some nice big sweeping hyzers with this disc. Yeah, it's not crazy overstable that a low power arm can't handle it. Um, it's not crazy flippy where a power arm is going to really yank it over a lot. It's really nice and neutral, pretty straight. It has some turn, but it's got that solid fade. And yeah, Steve likes to throw a lot of flip-up hyzers. And so this wasn't flipping up quite like his strikes do, but it's gotten a flip that it does, does fly pretty well. Um, I think this is where I actually get some nice... I, this I actually got it on an ante line and got it to hold it a little bit. Um, so you can see there, the white line is the release angle in all these videos, if you guys can see that. I think you can. Um, which, P.S., we're working on some new technology to do some full screen video. It's going to be really sweet when we make it work. <laughs> uh, hopefully, that's going to happen in the next couple of weeks. But yeah, so that's coming out of my hand at pretty much this angle. It held that turnover most of the way and faded out right at the end. So um, it's pretty maneuverable, pretty controllable. You can do pretty much what you need to with it. Um, if you want to turn it over, you can. If you want to throw it straight, you can, you can make it do that. Uh, if you need to throw a hyzer that doesn't crash too much, it's got a lot of options. That's 338 and a big turnover. I think that's a little off based on the GPS. But uh, yeah, it's a pretty decent turnover driver if you have to. Again, it, you have to force it over to get it to dump like that. But it's got some turn to do that. I think this is the farthest throw of the day. 375. <clears throat> Another. That one I really went and mashed on it. Yeah, it's I, pretty close to flat in that one. Yeah, I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to get as far down as I can, and I really I kind of thought I was going to get a little more turn on that, but I think there might have been a little bit of headwind uh, on part of the throws, and then at the end it finally like the trees. The trees kind of messed with it, but there wasn't a ton of wind that day. We'll be honest; there was little <laughs> no wind. 
Don't lie to him. And oh. Wayne, I see your comment. We have that software you're talking about. We're just working on some some overlays and some stuff and exactly how to make it work. But we're we're on it, Wayne. Uh, and yes, Jake, we're throwing as close to max weight as we can. Steve, the white one is what? 173. Okay, this is 173 too. So they're the two heaviest that we had. Um, all right, so let's look at, I think I've got, yep, this is the flick shot. I really like this as a flick disc. Um, I don't throw a lot of big mash, like enforcer or destroyer flicks. Um, I like to throw it a little flatter, let it flip up. Um, so this is actually a little bit ante. Flips up, gets a nice little turn for me, and then solidly fades back out. 295, my flick maxes out at like 320 on a mash. Um, so that's a pretty solid distance for it. Um, it's not the easiest driver to throw. I'm probably not handing this to a beginner, but if you've thrown, if you're, you know, if you're overpowering Valks, or if you've thrown the Sidewinder or the Roadrunner and you've gotten used to it, um, and you want a little bit more stable driver, I think this is a great option. They, they're not hard to throw, but they're not the easiest disc in the world. They got some good glide. They got, they're really controllable. Um, I like these a lot. Um, the only problem for me is they overlap with my wraiths a lot, which my, the wraith is my favorite driver of all time. <laughs> so it takes, the, 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 they're really, really similar. Um, all right, so, all right, John Ciotta, I think you're going to win the other trace because you just asked how does a trace forehand, and boom, there's your answer. So did I give the neutron or the proton trace away earlier? We already gave the neutron away. All right, so you win the proton trace. Um, keep asking questions. Somebody's going to win the pilot here in just a second. Um, let's see. I think that's all of our videos for now. Yep, that's everything. Again, check out UDisc. They make a great app. It does great things. And let's go back through and answer some of your questions. Um, there we go. All righty. Everybody... Let's see if I can find some of the other questions that people asked here. Ask us some more. Um, Steve, any cool and interesting things happening at the disc store while I look for some questions? Disc store? Any, any new exciting things happening soon? Um, geez, there's so many things, it's hard to really pick, pick what's coming in. Uh, like Nate said earlier, we have been out of strikes for a little while. We're getting new strikes in. We're going to be getting more Rock X3s in. Um, I'm going to get most of Vibram on the website tomorrow. I know I announced it like a month ago that we had it, um, but we have it. I'm making myself do it tonight and tomorrow. Um, I have like 14 boxes of new discs. So if you're, if you're again, uh, I asked earlier, somebody uh, get some comments on What's a disc that you don't, you can't find on our website that you want? Is it Origio stuff? Is it Prime stuff from Dynamic? Is it a DX mold that we don't have? Um, something that I can get, not the not the fancy Pro Stamp stuff that Innova won't let me buy. Sad face. But uh, something that we don't have on our website that you're like, I really want this old disc that I Stingrays or something like that. Comment something that we don't have that you want, and I can pick see if, about picking it up. I want to make you guys happy. Um, Steve, we got any cool sales coming up? Do you know about this week? Sales? I'm sure we do. Um, we just had a nice deal at Sunglasses, so there's got to be something else coming up. Uh, Sorry, Keith. I saw his, the other guy's comment first. My bad. Um, no, man. I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Oh. Steve, why don't you grab one of our disc golf towels? I don't think we've showed those on a live video yet. Okay. So, okay. Um, while you're doing that, Steve, Frank Bennett wants to know how often we get, we get out to disc golf. Uh, how often do you go out, Nathan? Um, depending on the week, I try to get two to three rounds in a week. Um, That's it? Depending on if I'm playing a <laughs> tournament around. I actually play other sports where I run. Yeah. So there's yeah. that. And I'm playing club this summer, so that also is like... So these are these should be on the website. If they're not, I'm going to go smack Kevin. Um, but there are new custom disc golf towels. Steve, what do you think about those? You, do you have one yet? Do you need one? I don't have one of these yet, but I definitely will be grabbing one. This is actually one of the most sturdy uh, clips I've ever felt. And that's important because going through the woods, that's some place where you are very likely to lose a towel. And... I'm also very likely to throw into the woods, so 
I need to protect myself from myself. Yeah, I think those are like seven bucks on our website, which is super cheap, super towel cheap. wise. Um, they're they're actually pretty great. They're not like the quick dry stuff, but they actually absorb a little more. And they, I, I used one when it rained on me at GBO, and it helped a lot. Yeah, check those out. And the awesome distor swag is also cool. Um, let's see, Deanna Griffith generally wants to know what's best for throwing when it's windy. First off, do you think the trace is a good wind disc? Absolutely. Now, like, what kind of wind? Like, full-on, like, hurricane wind? I would say like, you're throwing, you have to throw into a head. I would say go decent kind of hyzer. Let it, let it kind of, it, it's going to flip up a little bit from a decent hyzer. It's going to flip up a little bit, but I think it's going to fade every time. You got a, a cross, cross tailwind. I, I think this is going to be great in a tailwind for sure. Yeah. It's got just enough turn for that. Um, I think mid to slightly high power arms and like a 5 to 10, to like maybe up to like a 15 mile hour headwind, throwing it on a hyzer you're probably going to be fine. You've got four, 400 to 450 power. Um, it, at any more headwind than that, you might run into some trouble. Mm -hmm. I haven't thrown it enough. I haven't thrown it in windy conditions yet. But it, I don't trust my rates into like 30 mile an hour headwinds, except for my most stable one on a hyzer. So I, I wouldn't say that like this is the one I'm going into Emporia with, being super confident. Yeah. Um, I'm going to want my defenders for that. Um, in general, you want a pretty overstable disc to handle the headwind. So I'm usually throwing something like, like 03 or 04 into headwinds, and so the negative one two isn't quite as much as I want for like 25 mile an hour headwinds. Um, the more overstable a disc is, the more consistent it's going to be, the less it's going to flip over. But for mid to low power arms, I think it's going to be fine. Um, and for like light five to 10 mile an hour headwinds, you're fine. With yeah. Too. Um. All right. How many? Uh, where, who had that? Where'd it go? Somebody wanted to know how many aces we have. I have one unofficial ace and one official ace. The first one was like... That's Brett Nichols, by the way. Brett Nichols asked how many aces we have. That was, uh, my first one was definitely early in my disc golf career. And then I got one last summer. I'm trying to think through them all. It's eight or nine for me. It's been like two years since I've hit one. Aww. But uh, I think eight or nine. Um, but he's seen a lot. I also, <laughs> yeah. The, when I moved here to Nebraska last summer, the first three weeks I was at our doubles league, somebody aced on my card. So like the organizer was getting bribes for people to be my partner just so they could hit an ace. <laughs> it was pretty funny. I was really hoping at some point it was going to be my turn, yeah. but not yet. Yeah. Um, all right, so what are the questions we've got here? We gotta give this away somehow. Um, oh, I never answered how how often I play. Oh yeah. Um, now that it's nice out, I'm at the course almost every day, or doing field work every day, or skip field work and playing and putt for multiple hours. Uh, also, don't do that. Putting for multiple hours is way too bad. We'll see. We'll see. I'll, I'll be the final judge of that. Put it this way. <laughs> I was at GBO and somebody asked the pro panel, how how long should your putting sessions be? And all five of them said, well, Ricky didn't say anything. They've been playing for that long. But uh, Yeah, but if you're doing it for two hours, you're not focused and you're not going to be doing things the right way. But all, all four of the other panelists other than Ricky said no more than 20 to 30 minutes. So that way, cause that way you can stay focused, making tournament style putts. Um, if you're doing it for two hours, you're getting tired and you're not focusing on your form as much, um, and you're just going to develop bad habits. Which is what I'm trying to tell Steve, but he doesn't listen to me. Um, okay, Kyle Forrest wants to know, Kyle Forrest and Geoffrey Newton want to know what you would compare this, what putter you would compare this to. Since it has such glide, I would say the Marshall. Uh, okay. I, I think that both of them really just want to stay in the air. Um, maybe... Let me grab a swan. Yeah, there's... That would probably... I've be, been putting with the same putter for four years, so it's hard for me to compare. Yeah, to and now that it's beaten in, if... Yeah, like, my broken broken NPA3 has a lot of glide, but... Uh, I think a PA3 is not a bad comparison. 
Uh, it's kind of like a swan. It's got similar numbers. Steve, what did the description say? Like a beaten in anode is what it said? Yeah, so it's between, it's between the atom and the anode with the depth of it, but its flight is a beat up anode. See, I think... That doesn't go there. Um, again, I've put it with judges for the last four years, so I, haven't, I can't compare it to a lot of putters, but I think swan is going to be pretty similar to flight. Um, Brian McGuire wants to know where you found that awesome shirt. Yeah, I, Wally World, man, just walking through. I don't even think it was near the 4th of July or anything, but I was just like, you're coming home with me. All right, so because I have to give this away to somebody, Joffrey Newton, for asking what putter this compares to, you win this Electron Soft Pilot, which I'm sad to give away because I'm starting to like it. Yeah. Um, all right, make sure you... Uh, Anybody, I think it's all of our giveaways, it's all stuff we got to do. Um, Steve, what do we think about the, the trace and the pilot just in general? Pilot, super get nice me, disc. Give me last minute questions in before we go. Super nice disc, I love the soft plastic. Uh, the traces, I would say, I would put this in the bag if I need something to fight the wind more than my beast. And Nate's saying my beast is still pretty stable. So I would say this is the little tick more, a little faster, a little more stable that I would say I need to fight this wind or I need to get around this tree. Um, four-handers, nice easy flick too. It's yeah. real nice and easy. Yeah, and it's not like the style flick. If, it, if, you're, if you're throwing like the Nate Sexton style flick where he's flicking Excaliburs like six billion feet, this isn't that disc. This is a little less power, flip up hyzer flick. Um, it's a really nice maneuverable control driver. Like the numbers are 11, 5, negative 1, 2. So immediately that screams to me rate because I throw tons of rates. Um, it, I couldn't mash it quite like I mash my rate. Like it's not quite that, but it's just a, for me it was just a touch slower with a touch less glide, but a touch straighter too with a little less moving. And so like, it's a little more controllable. Um, if I didn't bag race, I'd probably bag these. Yeah. Um, but they're really similar. They're great discs. They look awesome. Yeah, the triple stamping, stamping is triple sweet. Stamping. Um, and I've got tons of the special edition first run ones left. So you should check those out on the website. And I've got more of these coming next week. Um, so check them out on the website, uh, distor.com, all the new stuff. I have a new release section up um, on the website. So check that out. If you click that, it's going to have the 20 newest discs that have come out. So that's going to keep updating. I've got a bunch of new stuff coming from MVP, from Dynamic, from Innova, all sorts of new releases. I got a Prodigy new release coming out next week that Will Schuster's going to help us talk about. Um, lots of cool new stuff. Uh, check it out, and we will uh, see you guys later. Thanks for watching, gang.